Norica Segmentata. Well, it's a quite simple design. So how much difference is there really between a cheap set and a high quality one? Hey Noble Ones, what a pleasure to see you here! So today we're going to talk about Lorica Segmentata because lately I have been I have done quite a lot of research uh, not only on the historical uh, usage in, in Imperial Rome of Lorica Segmentata but also as far as actual armourers uh, producing these uh, Lorica uh, are concerned here in Europe. Now of course you can get a Lorica Segmentata quite easily if you look at if you look up any uh, site which does armor and, and weapons, you will find Lorica Segmentata pretty much everywhere. Uh, particularly, of course, if they deal with Roman uh, replicas and Roman reenactment. The thing is, though, that most, the majority of these Lorica are rather cheap and, and therefore low quality. So, on this video, I'd like to first off uh, tell you uh, how to recognize a high quality and very well made Lorica Segmentata as opposed to a low quality, cheap Lorica Segmentata, and then tell you what the real difference is. Is and, and why it matters so much. And in fact, the Lorica Segmentata that I own is a cheap one. That is because I bought it when I was at the very beginning of my channel. I didn't know where my channel was going. I didn't know whether I was going to make, uh, to have a revenue from it or not. So I had to go uh, cheap because of budget reasons. But um, I'd like to take this opportunity today to also thank all the people who are who have supported my GoFundMe campaign, my recent GoFundMe campaign, Armor Me Up. Uh, and, and I'd like to say that this campaign is going really well. And I. I <laughs> I was really amazed, like so many people donated and you have been so generous and I wish to thank you really from the bottom of my heart for what you are doing for me, for my channel, for believing in me and in what I'm trying to do. As you know, as I said on that video, with this campaign, which is still of course going on, um, and I will leave a link down below for, for those people who wish to support me, based on the idea of uh, getting new, high quality, historically accurate sets of armor. I'm going for Muromachi period for Samurai and I was going for Republican Roman. And I I am still going for Republican Roman, but the fact that I've had um, these donations, it also allows me to uh, upgrade my current Imperial set. And today we will see how and, and why that is important and how that can be done. So we'll do that as well, thanks to you. And, and then if the donations continue the way they are going, I will also get a, a late 13th century West, Western European knight set and it's going to be amazing, made by a really good armor. But I will tell you more about this and why I chose this specific date to reenact this specific date uh, on a later video. Today we're going to focus on Roman. So how can you recognize a cheap Lorica Segmentata from a uh, high quality one? Well, this is a cheap Lorica Segmentata, mine. Okay, we'll, we'll use that one as an example. Um, the way it looks good, it looks good. But once you start to understand how to look at it, like look at the actual um, girth hoops, the actual segments that make the um, cuirass, the protection of the torso, you will see that it has a cylindrical shape. That's already a bad thing. And each segment has the same exact um, size of the others. Again, a bad thing. Segmentata is supposed, just like any other form of armor, to be honest, to be tailored to the, to the body of the wearer. It needs to taper at the waist in order to decrease the um, weight on top of the shoulders. Um, so now that you have seen this, you can appreciate this from the size even more. It looks like, you know, a, a cylinder. Now look at a well properly made high quality armor. Check this out. I know, right? armor porn. <laughs> Anyways, so see how different the uh, segments are. See how smaller they become as they get closer to the hips of the person wearing it. That is the idea, the whole concept. And this is how Roman soldiers would have had their armor made. And it really makes a difference, not only from an aesthetical point of view. Yes, aesthetics, whatever, it looks a lot better. It's beautiful, but that's not the only difference. The other difference is that it helps distributing the weight a lot more. So it's not not all on your shoulders, but it's shared between your shoulders and your hips, similarly to a modern day uh, backpack, one of those used for tracking. And this armor is was made by uh, an armorer by the name of Fabrica Cacti. They are the best in Europe, if you ask me. Really, really good uh, replicas and, uh, and yes, so perfectly tailored for the wearer. In other words, I doubt you could get anything better than this. Beauty, I think after seeing this, you won't be able to appreciate cheap Lorica Segmentata replicas anymore. 
How much of a difference does it actually make? Well, this is what I am going, one of the many things I'm going to test when the very moment I receive this armor. Fight in it, I will march in it, and then I'll do the same exact things with the cheap version, and I'll let you know how much of a difference it actually makes. But I will also horseback ride on it. Why? You could ask. I mean, it's a, it's the armor of a legionary, isn't it? Well, yes, if we look at the Trajan column, 107, um, we find in that sort of iconography, we have basically two different bodies, two different kinds of soldiers depicted on that uh, column. Uh, you have the auxiliary uh, troops, the auxilia, which are they, they are all wearing lorica hamatas, so or male, and a circular or overly shaped uh, scutum or shield. Whereas citizen uh, Roman legionaries, the heavy infantry, they are all wearing lorica segmentata. Now, some people who are sort of against the Trajan column as a, and I'm not, because I, I really like Trajan column as a as a way to, uh, to uh, the iconography that we find in order to study the Romans. But some people sort of dismiss it, saying that Trajan column might be an artistic representation. Some people even brought up the idea of uh, the Trajan column just being showing a whole army wearing segmentata because maybe they were on a parade but on actual battle they wouldn't wear their, that, they would wear hamata. To me that doesn't make sense. Like the idea of the entire empire going to the hassle, through the hassle of producing thousands of lorica segmentata, which is a perfectly viable armor. It works in battle, it has some advantages and disadvantages. I will cover that once I get both and I can test them. And I've already covered some of the differences between the two, and I will cover them even more. Um, but it makes no sense, like, you, you waste so much money just for parades? Absolutely not, I don't agree with that. But definitely, um, the idea of all legions in Imperial times with all soldiers wearing segmentata, I think sometimes it might have happened, depending on the sort of campaign they were going to, uh, because maybe of the sort of, because of the kind of weapons that their enemies were, were using. I mean, if you think about it, during the Dacian Wars, they were wearing manica um, to protect uh, the soldiers from the uh, kind of swords used by the opponents. So again, yes, the Roman legions were um, sort of ever-evolving, constantly changing, um, very dynamic uh, f troops, armies that were used, they would change sometimes depending on the enemy and the sort of campaign that they were going to. So there might, it could be that some legions had that sort of equipment because they were used for specific kind of tasks. But on the other hand, there, is, there are many other uh, representations. For example, if we look at the Tropaeum Trajani, um, celebrating the victory of, of the Romans over the Dacians and after the Battle of Adancles. Um, on there, we see again iconography of loads of soldiers. There is not even one wearing segmentata, so either hamata, male, or squamata. Uh, scale armor and and th yes that's puzzling because it th this monument was erected in 109 so it's basically contemporary to the Trajan column the way I read this is that some legions were equipped with segmentata but not all legions were and also maybe there were also some legions who would be would have a bit and a bit some people with hamata some people some people with segmentata this is the way I read it well anyways why cavalry Cavalry because, although most people consider segmentata to be exclusive to uh, legionaries and heavy infantry, but there is a finding that sort of puzzled uh, scholars, and it's a finding in a Roman fort in Spain, which contained around 12 to 14 segmentata. And what's interesting is that that fort can, uh, hosted specifically a cavalry detachment of the Romans. So. Cavalry wearing segmentata? Well, that's never mentioned, uh, unfortunately, by Roman writers. Vegetius does mention auxiliary, and he does mention them wearing mail, as far as cavalry is concerned. But Vegetius sometimes, it's, I mean, I love Vegetius to bits, but sometimes you can't really be sure, because unfortunately, for example, he always talks about auxilia and he mentions them to be light troops, but well, while we do know that sometimes auxiliary could be also heavy infantry, but he never mentions that. So, yeah, uh, not really sure, but the idea is maybe Segmentata was also used by citizen cavalry rather than auxiliary cavalry, that, that's my take. And I will be trying wearing Segmentata on horseback, then wear Hamata on horseback and see uh, uh, what differences we see. Segmentata will completely disappear at the end of the 4th century, although in the in the Arch of Constantine, in the, which belongs to the 4th century, it still appears. But then it will, uh, basically the empire will go back to mail and scale. All right then, well I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. So, Roman reenactment is fascinating. I, I really like it. And of course, we can study, we can learn as Vegetius, Pliny, and whatever we want, uh, but if we don't wear the armor and we don't do certain things, we can. There is all, also 
as much as one can learn. And I, I, I think I proved this point with one of my latest video called The March, where on that video, which was not a video specifically made for the reason of of finding and discovering these things, I still found out so many things that I decided to include a an experiment in that video. If you haven't watched it, please check it out to see what I'm talking about, because we found out some things about Lorica and marching that I didn't know, and I, to be honest, never read anywhere, anywhere else, even though I've read a lot. I've also read in Latin, uh, you know, the actual sources, and yet that was some of the things that I've found out um, I found out only through actual experimentation. So we are giving to the Metatons channel a little bit of a more scientific approach. Testing things, testing theories. This is what we are doing. And I will see you tomorrow for my next daily upload. I wish to again thank you all for your support, for believing in me, for believing in my channel. And thank you for watching, thank you for your time. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Valete!